Hi everybody, it's Maya here at the Norway Point Environmental Center uh, at the Hudson River National Estuarine Research Reserve and today we are going to talk about one of our absolute favorite animals, the American eel. The scientific name for this animal is, get ready to try it with us, Anguilla rostrata. Uh, eels we love for a lot of reasons, um, but one of the um, things that we really, really love about this particular animal is that it has an amazing migration story and a really, really cool life cycle. So the American eel is a fish that is called catadromous, which means that it migrates from where it spawns out in salt water. It migrates up into freshwater habitats in order to grow and live out most of its life cycle. So today we're going to look at a map of the path that this fish takes throughout the course of its life and we're going to see what it looks like at different growth stages. Here we are out in the Atlantic Ocean and we are going to travel along with the American eel as they make their migration path. So out here in what is called the Sargasso Sea is where scientists have identified that eels spawn. So this is where you would find eggs, if you could find them. Then once the eels hatch from their eggs, they start to travel. So at this point, they're tiny little willow leaf shaped clear animals that just drift along with the currents. They're called leptocephali. And they're traveling along the currents of the Atlantic Ocean. And as they're flowing along with the water currents, they start to grow and feed and their body changes shape. As they meet the Gulf Stream and make their way up the East Coast, they'll travel out into these estuaries along the way. Some of them make their way up to the Hudson River estuary. At this point, the animals have changed into what we call glass eels, where they're long, thin, almost snake-like looking clear bodies. And we do actually find lots of glass eels in the streams uh, and tributaries of the Hudson River estuary. Now they'll go up into the creeks and streams on the estuary, and as they feed here on macroinvertebrates, little aquatic bugs, and things like that, they start to pigment, meaning their bodies change color. And they turn kind of a brownish um, that helps them blend in with the habitat here, and it's also a similar color to the foods that they're eating. At this point, they become what's known as elvers. Then, the American eel spend uh, quite a few years up in these streams and creeks and, um, you know, perfect habitat for, um, for fish until they grow to an adult size. Um, and these are known as yellow eels. These are all the same species, even though at different stages they have different names because they look quite different. Male yellow eels can live up to a decade or longer, but the females can live up to 20 years or even more. And then these adult eels get some kind of signal to return back to the Sargasso Sea. So these silver eels at this point, they've gotten bigger, they, their eyes change, they get much, their eyes get larger, um, they actually stop eating and digesting food entirely because they've become almost like a missile that it's on its singular path back out to the Sargasso Sea. So the silver eels, male and female, complete this life cycle on a migration path back out here to this calm patch in the Atlantic Ocean. We're gonna look very close up under a microscope at a glass eel right now. So you can see this little animal, his mouth is moving. You can see it's very apparent dark black eye. You can even see its little heart beating. You'll notice its gills are moving as it gets oxygen. And you can even see some of the pigmentation starting in the body because this eel has been in the Hudson River for a few weeks. So one of the amazing adaptations that eel have, even when they're quite little like this, is that they create a lot of mucus slime all over their bodies. And that mucus helps protect their skin from bacteria and viruses and it helps them avoid predation, it makes them very slippery. And as their skin stays moist, they're able to get oxygen from the air. So they can even travel over land if they can stay wet.
thanks for joining us today again with Hudson River Education and uh, learning about one of our favorite animals, the American eel. We'll see you again soon, everybody.